Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. Just making sure. Hi again. Anyway, um, so tonight is DIY. Is DIY. Ooh, hold on. I'm getting right back. Carrera marble countertops. Yes. Okay. Hi, Becky. So, um, as people are popping on, I'm just going to talk for a minute or so and just let everybody know Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have eight artist residents and we will all be doing different finishes throughout the year. So we have 12 months of us and some really wonderful finishes that um, you can learn. And like I said, tonight we're doing Carrera Marble on a countertop. I'll actually be doing it on a sample board, not an actual countertop, but I will give you as much instruction as I can about doing it on a countertop. Um, we do samples because you wanna practice. And I'm not sure how many of you have actually tried these, this technique or these products. So it really is good to, to practice. And what I'm using is, I like to do mine on, this is quarter inch MDF. And you can find it at Home Depot, big box stores. MDF stands for medium density fiberboard. It works great. You don't have to do anything to the surface to prepare for it. It's smooth. You can work either side. So, um, let's see. Hi, Summer. How are you? Yay, I'm so glad to see you. Anyway, um, let's start. Carrera Marble is beautiful. It's classic, it's timeless. I think a piece of it could be everywhere, so in everybody's home, I think. Um, I have coasters. I brought a couple pieces. Um, when you're thinking about Carrera Marble as a surface, um, Carrera Marble is known more for being subtle veining and um, it can range from a whiter to a lighter gray. So if you're thinking you want more contrast, that's more of a Calcutta marble. So Carrera is a nice way and to get into this and in marbling so you're not so much hung up on the, the veining because that is definitely a little more complicated. So um, when you're starting out, what I like to do is look up pieces, go to countertop places, take pictures, look at the marble itself and see, I don't want you to think I'm painting this marble. I kind of want you to think I'm creating this marble. If you put yourself in the mindset of the, the flow and the shape and the color, rather than painting brush strokes or sponging on something. I think it might loosen you up and we want it to be organic because marble is formed over thousands of years of water flowing and heating up and pressure and the earth cracking and causing the veins. So um, it's really a, a beautiful substance. And there's only one place in the world that Carrera Marble is from, which is Carrera, Italy, which is in Northern Tuscany. So once that quarry is done, it's done. So, um, so that's why painting it is really great. When I went to Italy, oh my gosh, I got in so much trouble. They would yell at me all the time, Signora, don't touch, don't touch. Cause I'm, I'm looking at all of the painted marbles and all of the buildings and oh my gosh, it was just wonderful. So if you ever get to see that, just, just take so many pictures. So, um, so like I said, I, I got a couple pieces of marble. This one is one and you notice there really isn't much veining in it. It's very light and subtle. This one is another one. So it's got a little more. And then I have, I brought this one too. So if you see this one, it has a little bit more. So we'll probably do something in between what I show you guys. Um, and 
Also, if you guys drop your email into the comments or direct message me, I can send you a PDF of the full instructions with the supply list and a tool list. And also what I like to do is while I'm working on a project, I like to have this form. And basically what it is is a sample card. And this way I keep track of my steps and then I'll put a little dot of the colors that I'm using so you can refer back to that. And if you send that, I'll be happy to email you a PDF of that also. So, um, see, now I can't see comments on here. Let's see, swipe left. Oh, there we go, now I can see them. Yes, Amy, we love Carrera Marble, right? I know, who doesn't? Hi, Stacy. how are you? Karen, yes! So, oh my gosh, this is my first live, and I'm like, ah, oh, going nuts. Anyway, so let's talk about supplies, what we need. It's really not a whole lot of supplies. Um, you're going to need Venetian plaster, and it just comes untinted. And I can tell you this, I have been certified in plasters, lime plasters, since 2005. I have used numerous products. Um, I could go talk about plasters. I've trained in French and Moroccan and Amy's Venetian plaster is lovely. It's only three ingredients. It's lime, calcium carbonate, which is chalk, and marble dust. And it goes on like butter. It's an all natural product. If some of you have tried some of the other ones that are synthetic, there are good ones and bad ones of that too, but they could be goopy and they're hard to trow. But seriously, this really goes on like butter. So you need Venetian plaster. You need Toscana milk paint in Noir. You will need clean slate. You will need one step paint in ballet white. You will need matte sealer. And let's see, here we go. And as far as products, you will need the acrylic glacier resin. So as far as products, you need what? One, two, three, four, five, six products. Um, which is nice and affordable. So as far as tools, I suggest a spray bottle, just in case. I suggest, I'm gonna show you three different trowels, actually four. Um, I have a Japan trowel. So a Japan trowel is very thin and flexible. I personally like a Japan trowel for me because I've used trowels often and it's very light and because Amy's is, is super easy to work with, you don't have to struggle. So this one works well for me. Um, you have the traditional trowels of, these are Italian trowels, a Kome and a Pavan. Pavan might be German, I'm not sure. But um, you'll notice this one is straight, straight edges. This one is a taper, it tapers slightly. Um, I kind of prefer a taper over a straight, but that's my preference. Um, one's larger, one's smaller. It doesn't make too much of a difference doing a countertop. The average kitchen has about 60 square feet, I believe, of counter space. So, and you're not going super deep so you could use either one. Um, let's see. We also have a German scraper trowel, which these come in handy too for doing some um, different designs if you're getting into a, a different type of a marble, but this is always an option as well. Um, let's see, I have a small spatula I like. I like my, um, I use this as an opener, but it's also, it 
I take out pigment with this stirrer. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, let's see. Oh, you want a bucket of water with a sponge because as you're working, you always want to keep your trowel clean. That's very important. So every so often you'll want to scrape it, wipe it, because the plaster does dry a little bit quick because it's uh, more, well, natural, but um, it's just kind of the tendency of it. So, and then let's see. When we get to the resin, you'll want to wear a respirator. I'm not going to wear one tonight because you won't be able to hear me, obviously. And let's see what else. We will want a... I prefer when I'm putting on the resin to have kind of a... We call this a magic trowel or a squeegee. This is a squeegee. You could do that. Um, let's see... And I have three different size paddles. You honestly aren't mixing huge amounts for this, so you could get by with one of the smaller ones rather than the big one. Uh, let's see. You will want a whiz roller, uh, preferably, I think this is only four inch, but you could do a six inch whiz roller. And a natural sea sponge, small is fine. I prefer a smaller one for this rather than a large one. And also, I use just a couple brushes. So one is a round and then one is a, a liner brush. And I'm always licking them because I tend to get little flares out, but this liner brush, see that little hair? That stinks. But uh, they have them longer, which is fine too, but I prefer a little bit shorter one just for, especially this one. Um, and you'll want a little tray with some water. And also, I already pre-mixed my Venetian plaster. I'll go through that, but you'll want a couple mixing buckets for the product and some gloves. So, um, I guess let's get started and let me move this stuff around here. So I can't see comments anymore. Oh, hi, Kelly. <laughs> Karen, I don't know everything. Oh my gosh. I wish I did. Oh, and I think I can't do anything half the time. So, um, let's see. You're so sweet. And if anyone is thinking about going to Amy's retreats, I highly suggest it. I went in March, I think it was March, right? The first one. And it was really such a, a wonderful experience. And I met such lovely people and just being with people that are like-minded and it's, it's way more than just painting. You, you come away with, just a little bit more purpose and intention. And I think for me, as I'm getting older, that's what's important. What's important is about what we give out to the community, to serve other people. Anyway, that's, that's my little soapbox today, I guess. Uh, let's see. Okay, so, so first step, um, Oh, well, you will need a couple tools too. I brought my, I just brought it up, but I just have an orbital sander that you're going to want to sand your countertop, use a 60 grit, that should work fine. Um, get that well, you really wanna get it clean. Once you have it sanded, then you're gonna wanna come with the clean slate, the clean slate, you're gonna saturate a rag, wipe it down. You wanna get all the dust off. So, and oils, any dirt, grime, whatever. You really want that nice and clean for the next step. And the next step is going to be applying your one-step ballet white. And I, I'm not gonna show you that part because I already did it. Basically, you're just gonna roll on the whole counter 
from start to finish everywhere, roll your edges. You're gonna put two coats. I like two coats. Roll it on with a whiz roller. You could do a regular roller too. I probably wouldn't do a paintbrush. Um, you could potentially leave brush marks and we don't want that. We want it as smooth as possible. So like I said, this one is ready to go. So let me turn down my, my camera here. Let's hope you guys can see that. Let's see, is that good? Okay. Hopefully that shadow's not too bad. There we go, okay. So your counter is sanded, it is cleaned, and we now have a painted surface with the One Step Ballet White. So you are going to mix, you're going to take your Venetian plaster and you are going to do one part water to one part Venetian plaster. And I probably start with a little less water because for me it's easier to add a little more than, than have it too runny and have to add more powder. So in this instance, I did eight ounces of water and then I just um, started slowly mixing in my Venetian plaster. I would stir it with just my stir and you just mix it up. Um, like I said, this one, this little, this little paddle works great, actually even in this size. And I did do this after I mixed my initial one because it'll be really watery at first with the initial powder. But as you start to add more, you'll notice you'll get a little bit of clumping. I don't know if you can see that. Um, there are a little bits of clumps, but that's okay because they're perfectly fine. They trowel out, I, I didn't see any issue with that. Um, you can mush it on the sides if you see anything super big. Um, and now this has been mixed for three days now. And all you wanna do is put a little bit of plastic on there because you don't want any of the dry crumbles falling into your bucket. But you could use it for a long time, as long as it's sealed really well. So, and it's easier to have it mixed white and then add your, your color after, for me. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to put a base coat of plaster. Now again, we're gonna pretend this is our countertop. And when you're working on the countertop, you wanna work from back to front in a small section going down the length. You don't wanna start in the back and say work all the way down because you wanna to try to keep a wet edge. So I am going to use my Japan trowel. And when you're using a trowel, if you're right-handed and you're looking at it, you're gonna put it on the left side of the trowel. And if you are left-handed, you are going to put it on the right side of the trowel, the material. So, um, and again, this is when your bucket, let me grab my bucket my bucket with water and my sponge because like I said, you wanna make sure things are clean. Um, one of the worst things is if you get bunches of gumpies and then you wind up getting scratch marks, that is not fun. So you're just gonna take some product and put it on the edge of your trowel. Start on an edge and you want to hold the trowel at about a 30 degree angle. And you're just going to lightly pull it, spread it on there, make sure you get the corners. Now, if you're, obviously if you're working on a, 
an actual countertop, this point would not be able to be there. So you could potentially turn your trowel around and work this way. That's why sometimes having these little trowels come in handy for edges or even the German scraper so you could get into your edge. But obviously for this purpose, um, it doesn't matter. Oh, and see, I got a little hair in there. You don't want that little hair. And the goal for this coat is to put a 100% even level amount of product. So you want it smooth. There are other marbles that I do that you actually can put some texture in, but that is for another day. And again, don't forget, if you guys put your email in there or direct mail me, I can add you to my list and send you out a PDF. Um, I don't know if you noticed. So when you're troweling, let me just give you a, a quick thing. So trowels are engineered with a, a balanced fulcrum. Um, the, the goal of a trowel is to be level and weight distribution. So all trowels are a little different. If you look at these two, this one is up here and this one is back here. And this is what balances it. So when you're troweling, you want to have that balance in the palm, the middle of your hand. And that helps you keep your trowel flat. Because if you're, if you're just holding this back here, you're going to be more tempted to be off. Um, you'll, you could pull more here and you wind up with scrape marks than if you're holding it center. So, let's do a little more. I'll hold it up for you. Um, now, a lot of people don't use two sides of the trowels or they tell you not to. I've been troweling a long time, so I'm, I'm okay with it because I know what to look for, what, what um, like for instance, this is a little dry, so I wanna make sure I clean this off. That way it's not drying a little more. And when you're troweling, how many people have troweled on here that are watching? Let's see. Oh, you're welcome, Carrie. Thank you. I'm so glad you came on. It's so nice, honestly, seeing my Facebook friends, I know some people are like, oh, Facebook, but you know what? I have met so many wonderful people on Facebook, whether it's in my decorative finishing group or my concrete groups. It, it's, I think it's great. Okay. And I don't know if you notice, I, I'm doing a little bit of a, a wiggle with my trowel. I like to try to keep it organic. And you can hear, I'm, there's hardly any pressure on here. It's very light. And this is it for the first coat. One thing too, when you, when you have a trowel, you want to rest it. Uh, let's see, can you see it? you want to rest your trowel standing up like this because you really wanna be careful of your sides. You don't wanna gouge them because that could potentially cause cracks or scratches in your finish. So I'm going to wipe my trowel off. We always wanna be clean. So as you can see, I'm just wiping that off. 
Um, and if anyone is in my local area, I do have live classes too. I'll be starting them. My studio is finally done here and I'm still working on my website. So, okay, so this step is complete. Now you're gonna wanna let this dry overnight, preferably. I like it, let it dry. But you can kind of see there's a little bit of some, some trowel mark here, which I might wanna sand that, say tomorrow when it dries. Um, but I was kind of in a hurry and I'm, I'm talking more than paying attention to what I'm doing. So I'm gonna set this aside. We like the cooking shows. Ta-da! Okay, this one is done. And like I said, if you want to, to do a quick little sand, you can. Um, you can wipe it with a wet rag. It's not going to do anything. One thing about Venetian plaster also, you don't want to go too thick because it could potentially crack. So it's all about the layers. Um, so now you have your first coat done of Venetian plaster. You are going to mix, take a, just a little bit. A little bit is going to go a long way on on this project. So I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm just using a little bit. I am going to take my Noir and let's just put a little bit in here. Now this you can, you can go as dark or as light as you'd like. I don't like going super dark because then you need more coats to cover it. I think this will be a little too light though. Oh no, I think we'll be okay. A little light. No, we're good. So I just did just a pinch of the Noir And you can see that. If you wanna put it on a plate, that's fine too. It might be easier. Um, so what you're going to do is take your sea sponge, dampen it. Now again, this is when looking at your marble species to see exactly how you want it to go. Um, I have here a couple pictures. I don't know if you can see it. And this was one of my, my inspiration pieces. And you'll notice it doesn't have a whole lot of, like I said, the sharp veins. It's more of a soft, um, it's a little skippy. It's got a little bit of vein. So that's kind of what I'm going after. Um, one thing also, if you're doing marbles, just know that you probably won't be able to duplicate them, um, which you really don't want to anyway. They're one of a kind. You'll never get the exact same thing um, after it. So let's pull up the sleeves. Let's get our star. So you want to think also the flow of how marbles go. You kind of want to stay in one direction, whatever way you're going to do. Most of them are usually on a little bit of a diagonal. One thing you don't want are candy stripes. You don't want stuff here, stuff here, stuff here. That does not look natural. So, so I'm just going to take my, my sea sponge and just dab it a little bit. And it, it could be very minimal, I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just going to I 
I have different variations if you can see. Some are darker, some are lighter. You can smear it a little. You can have a little clump. But again, I'm still kind of going in a direction. And also remember, when you're thinking about composition, you're also thinking of the negative space as well as what you're doing. Um, that's just as important. You're looking at shape, you're looking at color, you're looking at space. And this is good right now. If you wanted to, you can, actually I'm gonna switch up trowels. Uh, let's go to this one. Um, and you want to just kind of drag it if some are wet. If they're not wet, that's fine. And you're just going to kind of go in that direction. What this is doing, it's creating the backdrop layer because we're going to build on this. There's going to be a couple layers. So I'm going to make sure my, my edge is clean again. And like I said, when you're doing this on a countertop, you're going to work in small sections. So you'll work from back to front and work from left to right or right to left, whatever you prefer that way. And let's grab some more product here. I don't want this one. Hang on, let me wash this off. I don't know, do you guys all talk to yourself when you're doing your projects? I sure do. I talk to myself all the time. So that's why this was kind of okay, because you guys aren't in person. So I feel like I'm just talking to myself. So let's grab some more white. And again, so you see how translucent that is because the dark showed through. And again, the same thing with this trowel. This one is a little different. I like to hold the fulcrum, the balance in the palm of my hand. And I, I keep my fingers on the side because it kind of gives me weight and balance of the trowel. And that way your hands don't get tired just like squeezing it. And for me, that feels awkward. So this is comfortable. I could trowel all day. And if you guys have questions while I'm going along as I'm doing this, obviously I probably won't see them, but I will get back to it and I can answer it or send you guys some information. Um, and see, I did the opposite if you guys put on. See how nice it already made that subtle? And like I said, this is, this is a little more of an intro marble or intro technique, I feel. Um, it's definitely doable. You guys can totally do this finish. It's not difficult. Don't be intimidated to pick up a trowel or, or try something. To, if you feel like say, oh gosh, I don't like this dark, you can add more, more white on top of it. Or you could do less. If you wanna show it more, then you just don't do quite as, as much. You just do more translucent. So, and now at this stage, I kinda let this dry a little bit. 
and then I figure out kind of where I'm going. When you look at marbles, um, they tend to follow cracks and different, um, where is this one? This one here. So if you're looking at this, um, see the veins, they're going to follow. So if you have a spot on yours and you see it clumpy, that's where you might want to add a little bit more, or you might want to connect this spot to this spot with a little bit of a, a light line. So that's why I really like to study the stones and really take a look at what they're doing. So, all right. So the next step, we're going to take that same product. I use my water. I like a wet brush. And you're just gonna go in there. And if you want to, I mean, you could continue just doing these sponges if you want, but I'm going to add a little bit of some spots and try not to overthink it. You can start, you can start on one end. Oop, I did not clean my trowel. Always, always clean your trowels. See, I'm not paying attention. So we always want to clean our trowel. It's good to um, scrape any excess off. Although you probably shouldn't put it in your bucket because then it will dry. So let's put it off to the side here. We always want clean tools. Clean tools are happy tools. Happy tools make happy finishes, right? So, all right. So from here, like I said, take your brush. I have it pretty wet. And you're just going to kind of start, I like pushing mine, and you're just going to not think about it too much, just have sporadic, and you can roll it and push it and see where it goes. And you can take your trowel and smooth it. and it will kind of blend it. So the plaster is still a little wet. And again, let's just take some more. And Just going to not even think about it too much. Let's smooth that a little bit. I like it soft and blended. Can kind of skip it's kind of like your your hands on some crazy caffeine high or something i don't know And 
I mean, there's some spots of marbles that have not much at all in them. So let's take some more white, put another layer of white. And if you get a little bit of a, a wet mark in there, you can just smooth that out. Honestly, this plaster is very forgiving too. Although, let it be known that, that it has a memory, the plaster itself. So you can see how, how little or how, um, so I have a little bit thicker coat. If I were to scrape it more off, you see more and I took it off. So you can play with the depth of what you want to do on that. If you want a little more white, add a little more white. And now you're starting to get the layers. You've got that first one. Now you've got the second one. Let's do a little more. And again, always clean your trowel off. Always, always. Super important. And again, don't forget, you guys can share these videos, all of our videos. There are eight of us, like I think I said, maybe in the beginning, that are very talented. We're here on Tuesdays and Thursdays which is super exciting. Let me show you with the thin brush a little bit. So if you wanted to um, add a little bit thinner vein um, on these, that's too much paint. I like kind of skipping it. And I'm just kind of going along where some of this went. And it looks like I'm all shaky. I'm really not. Um, oh, that's okay. Um, and marbles can over too they'll break so you might see some really fine lines in the marble which are really nice also and don't think about where you're going just kind of go and you'll see some some nice movement in there I always feel less is more um, and again don't overthink it and I don't mind this lighter spot in here. This I'd like to add a little bit of something, maybe. Um, now I'm not too keen on this one here, how I left it. So I'm gonna close that one up. So, marbles are great because you can really do some fun things. And again, there's different kinds of marbles, obviously. Um, let's add another layer. Now we're getting some really nice depth in here. And I like when the plaster is, is still wet 
and you add the, the gray on top and you come back and kind of almost blend it because it looks to me more natural than painted. I don't know if you can kind of see some of this up in here. Um, but this is, is looking really nice. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm okay with where this is at. This is probably a little too, too fake of an edge for me. So I might change that up a little bit. I can come back with, um, let me just dab on a couple more spots here. Kind of break that up. And smear that. There we go. That's a little better. So, I think I want this just a little lighter. So, so honestly, I'm I'm pretty happy with this for for the Carrera as far as kind of what my sample was looking like. If I show you that again, um, this is my inspiration picture and can you see that is it in there um, and this is my piece and again you could do this on a kitchen counter you could do this on a tabletop you could do this on a bathroom vanity um, I'm just gonna clean my edge off here So, pretty easy, right? You guys can do this, right? Yes, I am turning the brush. I kind of twist it in a motion and it, it's pushing it as I'm going. Thank you, Karen. Um, thanks, Carrie. Yes, we want to be out. Okay, I'm confused. I didn't know there was a video tonight. Oh, that's okay. It's going to be replayed, so don't worry. You won't miss anything. Um, do we burnish it? No, we're not going to burnish this for the countertop because we're doing a top coat, which I'm going to do next. And if you were doing a wall, yes. And that's one thing. Um, as far as plasters, I think a lot of people just use the word Venetian plaster and they're not quite sure of what that really means because lime plasters are all different kinds and it depends on the size of the aggregates and, the, and what's in there. Venetian is known for having a high marble content, which when burnished gives you that shine, which is what's beautiful. You cannot use Venetian plaster outside like some of the other plasters that have a thicker aggregate. So, um, so yeah, so, I mean, this took what, how many minutes to do? Now, granted, you're gonna have a, a bigger countertop, but don't overthink it, just kind of let it go and just let your hand move. And if you don't like something, if I didn't like something, I honestly could have taken when it was gray, I could have taken a wet sponge and washed it off and put more white on there and we would have been good to go. So it's really, you guys can do this. You don't have to have tons of experience. I do suggest though, like I said, practice on something before you go at your countertop. And then let this dry. You're gonna let this dry overnight. I gotta wash my trowels. I'm just anal about them. Um, so, this one too. And again, like I said, that plaster will last you a long time. Just keep it covered up in an airtight container. Put some plastic on there. And so, again, so there you go, right? Carrera Marble. Um, I could honestly, you could spend days and days and being nitpicky and really, you know, um, 
over trying, but that's why I say just try to stay loose. Try to just think you're creating or you're you're not painting. Don't don't think of brush strokes. Just think of look at the colors, look at the space while you're doing it. So I'm going to set this aside, and I will show you um, what we're what I found. Um, clean my space here. What I found is I'm going to show you. So once it's dry, you're going to roll on a coat of this one has the matte sealer on it already. So again, here's the matte sealer. You're going to want to just roll on a nice thin coat. It absorbs quickly but you're still gonna wanna let this dry overnight once you, so you're gonna let the plaster dry overnight and then you're gonna put on the matte sealer and let that dry overnight. Once that's dry, this is dried, so we're gonna do a resin on here right now. Um, I'm gonna show you the difference when you put Venetian plaster or the epoxy, the acrylic resin. This side is without the, the matte sealer. This has the matte sealer on it. So you can see the difference. Epoxy is a thermogenic where it conducts heat and it's very caustic in its own right. I don't care which kind of resin you use, it's all going to do the same thing. And this is yellow because it it is caustic because it kind of burns. So, and it has some reaction with the, with the lime underneath there. So you definitely wanna put the matte sealer on something first, okay? And I don't know if you can see, it's kind of glary, but it's really nice. The, I didn't have to use a torch. Um, I'll show you, I'm, I'm gonna apply it right now. So you'll get to see that. So when you are doing that, here's the torch that I have. Um, it's really easy to use. You're just going to, to open it up. And then you click. And it, it'll do its thing. So don't be too afraid. I remember I was at first. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to burn my house down. Ah! but you won't, it's okay. I mean, you obviously have to be careful, but, um, and for sample purposes, I'm just putting it on this, this um, little base here. And I'm definitely using gloves because I've worked with epoxy since 2008. And, oh my gosh, the first time I was, well, it wasn't the first time, but I was doing some samples for World of Concrete and I was actually doing some marble. I was doing a marble exhibit and I had my little cups mixed with plaster, or plaster, sorry, epoxy. And I thought, oh, I've heard about them flashing and getting hot, but I never saw it. Well, oh my gosh, I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there and one of my buckets started to smoke and then the other one started to smoke and I start and I looked at it and I went to put it in my face kind of and I got this horrible whiff. It was just super, super bad. So really don't breathe in epoxy fumes because it can be very damaging. So this is the acrylic glacier resin. It's very nice. It's, it's clear, it's sturdy. Um, you can always, if you don't want it high glossy, if you want to hone it down afterwards, you can do that with um, sandpaper. I would use a, you could do a thousand grit sandpaper or a wet 600 grit wet sandpaper, sand it and then put wax on it and you're good to go. I don't know if I do that in a kitchen though. That would just be more maintenance. 
So this resin is one part to one part. It will tell you right on there. Usually when you see a kit, if they're the equal size, they're gonna be equal parts. So for this sample, it worked perfect that I did one and a half ounces and one and a half ounces. And I like to add the hardener first because the hardener is thinner. And that way it doesn't stick to the bottom as if I was putting the other part in first. So let me just, oh, see how quick that was? All right, so we've got our part. You've got a little bit of time to work with this, a little bit. You don't want to dilly-dally, but so you could see how much thicker this one is. Okay, so, so that's part B. Well, that's actually part A, the hardener's part B. So because I'm just doing this small batch, I am just gonna mix it in this cup. But if I were doing an actual counter, I would be mixing a larger batch with my drill. You can just use a drill like this. I just put in my paddle. Um, if you girls don't have one, borrow one. Although I highly suggest, when I got divorced, <laughs> first thing I did was go buy a couple power tools. <laughs> That was uh, 26 years ago, but um, yeah, it was, uh, I'm like, I'm just gonna do the stuff that wasn't getting done. So, felt like Tim, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. So, and one nice thing, you are seeing some bubbles, but they do disappear because there are different formulations of resins that if you mix it too quick, man, those bubbles don't go away. And you have to definitely use a torch or you have to use some isopropyl alcohol to get rid of them. And that's kind of no fun. So, and at this level, I don't know if you can see, there are, there are a few um, skips or undulations in this, in this um, plaster, and that's okay because the epoxy is going to fill it in. So, so for this purpose, I'm just going to pour it right down the center. And because this is so small, I really don't need to use my trowel. And I'm just honestly going to spread it with, with this spatula here. Now you can use a foam roller, but you want it to keep things very clean. So use fresh, fresh stuff. That's why I like using the, the trowel or the squeegee because they, to me, they stay cleaner and resins, if you guys have worked with resin and you've gotten a hair in there, oh my gosh, it's not fun either. So, and this levels really nicely. So, oh, see, I got something in there. Piece of my stick, gosh darn it. What the heck? And you definitely wanna Look at those things. And when you are doing epoxy at the time when it comes to put the top coat on there, um, you want to keep anything out of the room. If you have pets, if you have kids, um, things that just float in the air can really cause havoc on your finish. Um, if you see bubbles like this, you can torch them. I noticed I had a couple yesterday when I top coated, but they all popped out without the use of the torch. So, 
And I don't normally use gloves or my hands, but because this is small and for sample's sake, I am. And honestly, you see, my hand just popped that. You can pop it with anything, a little toothpick. You don't necessarily have to have a torch, but if you can, well, you can't see, but there are some little micro bubbles. Let me just show you what a torch would do real quickly. Um, I'm going to take this off. And I like to have plenty of gloves when I'm doing epoxy work because I hate getting everything sticky. So, so again, you're just gonna turn, open it up. You'll hear it hiss. Oh no, you won't. You won't hear it hiss. Why aren't I hearing it hiss? There we go. So, you just lightly go over it. And it will, it will take out all the bubbles. And that's it. That's all you'll have to do. And just watch it. Now when you're doing a counter, you're gonna have to deal with the edges. Um, let's see. Gosh. Watch this fall right in my epoxy here. That would not be good. Sorry guys. Hold on. Anyway. So, I think we're supposed to have only like 35 minutes so let's see shoot um what the heck here we go there's nice oh nice okay it will be on a blog too is that particular epoxy food safe you know what good question amy would be able to answer that one I'm not too sure I should know this. I'll find out. Um, what type of roller, Carrie, for which part? What was that about? The roller for, for the mat sealer? I would just use a whiz roller, that's fine. You can use just a regular whiz roller like, like this one. Um, let's see. Yeah, the sealer, yeah. Um, oh, nice. Linda's from Arlington Heights. The racetrack's up there. Let's see, how do you handle the front? So if you have a square front, the edges are a little trickier, but you're just going to trowel everything on. You're gonna do all the same steps. And as far as the, the um, design you are going to just let's see I don't have a side one sample you'll just kind of continue the side you know as far as the designs as far as the epoxy on the edge you're gonna want it to roll over you can roll it first roll it with a roller and then let once you pour it it'll the tension will fall into it if that makes sense not sure Hi, Rhonda. I see you. You're on my friend list. So, thanks, Carrie. Um, I'd hold it up, but this one is wet. Like I said, I can hold up this part. So, it's hard to see. Let's see. But it really gives a nice, subtle Carrera, Carrera finish type look. Um, Let's see, any other questions? I hope you guys enjoyed it, I did. Um, like I said, I know you guys can do this. This is super easy for you. Um, not too many products, not that many steps, and it's things that you can, it's really forgiving. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and again, share the, share the the video make your comments i can send you a pdf of the i'm sorry because i'm watching myself ah, it looks so funny to see me um oh good stacy i'm glad you enjoyed it yes karen you're welcome so um 
So yeah, if you want to email me, like I said, I can give you a PDF too of the sample thing. Oh, good, Alyssa. I hope so. I know you guys can do it. Honestly, it, it's it's really not that intimidating. The trowel is probably the hardest part to for people that are painters to to go. I know I had a class that I was teaching some concrete work and um, her name was Sandy. She's a doll. She's still in it. And she was so afraid of the trowel. But don't let that intimidate you. It, it's really... Once you start working with it, and like I said, just kind of hold it. Don't just be nice and loose with it. Patricia, oh, thanks, Patricia. So um, I guess that's it for the evening, right? My next one, don't miss that because you could do your whole bathroom. You could do the Carrera marble countertop. And next lesson is that will be on the 27th magazine makeover magazine worthy bathrooms and i will be doing a a pelle patine which is a, a french patina cabinet finish so don't miss that one and i forget who's coming up next but again stay tuned on tuesdays and thursdays and then amy has a finish on fridays so you're gonna get all kinds of finishes throughout the year so Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learn. And make sure you post. If you guys do try it, put some pictures in there. If you have any questions, feel free always just to reach out because I, I can help you out, okay? So have a great night and thank you.